Hey, how are you? Hope you're having a great week. Welcome to the Coding Zoo. If this is your first time joining, my name is Shane, and this is the JavaScript Building Block Series. In today's lesson, we're going to cover a new data structure in ES6 called Map. So used to, we would do this with properties on an object. Now we have a data structure like the other languages out there called Map. So let's jump into that and check it out. So on my desktop here, I have an index.html page. It's just a basic page. I point to a main JS. Here's where most of my code lies. So I went ahead and as usual, I coded it ahead of time. I've got it commented out, make this lesson go by a little bit quicker. Feel free to download the code from the coding zoo or stop the video and code as I code. Previously with JavaScript, you if you wanted to use a data structure like a hash map or, or a map where you have basically um, 01 um, or constant insert and retrieval time on a data structure, you would use an object and you would use properties. You'd add properties to an object uh, and do it that way. Well, with ES6, JavaScript has moved forward finally and they it's got a data structure that is specific for that so you no longer have to use an object for that. This data structure is called a map. So in uh, other languages you'll see a map interface and a hash map. So JavaScript has finally created a data structure specifically for this. So you no longer have to use properties on an object, uh, dynamic properties on an object. This data structure is called map. So let's check it out. So on my screen here, I have a class, an ES6 class called contact. It has a constructor. You pass in these properties, name, age, and phone number, and those are assigned to the object that's created uh, with this class. So here I'm creating a constant called contacts, uh, and I'm saying contacts uh, equals a new map. So this is the new data structure. All right, so my object or my class is called contact. My map is called contacts. I'm going to put uh, a bunch of contact objects in the contacts map. So that's what I'm doing here. I've got contacts set and I'm setting a key. The key in this case is going to be a string. It can be an object, it can be uh, an object, a string, it can be a number, it can be pretty much any data type. So this is the key is Shane and I'm creating a new object, new contact, and here are all the properties that exist on that object. I'm going to the next line. I'm creating a, a similar object, but the name is Nick and the key to that object is Nick. So I'm basically representing myself and my two children, Nick and Gabrielle, and I'm putting the objects that represent uh, us into this contacts map. Let's say I wanted to iterate over the objects in that map. I'm, I'm not looking for a specific one. And if I was looking for a specific one, uh, it would be a 01 um, get time, a constant time as far as looking that uh, object up, but I'm not doing that. I want to actually get all of the objects and iterate through them and loop through them. Well, the new map object has the for each built in. And here's an example of using it. So I'm doing contacts dot for each, and I'm using an arrow function to take each one of those objects in that for each, and I'm gonna write out the name. So let's see how that works. So again, I have contacts for each. That takes a function. My function in this case is an arrow function, and it writes out the object's name property. So save it, go to refresh, go to the browser rather, there we go. So each contact in the map, Shane Crouch, Nick Crouch, Gabrielle Crouch. So pretty simple, pretty easy to do. I can loop through each one of them. Now, what if I wanted to um, access a specific object? So for example, I have the key and now I want to go get the object so I can get the rest of the properties. Well, you can do that this way. So contacts get Nick. 
So this is going to give me the object in the map that has the key of Nick. So once I get that object, I'm going to print out the phone number. So again, this is a constant lookup. It's, the, it's a fast lookup. It's 01. Um, that's, the, that's one of the benefits of maps inserting and getting individual properties uh, with the key or 01 constant time. Let's run that. Should print out Nick's phone number. And there we go. So how do you like Nick's phone number? 222-331111. That's a great phone number. Okay, let's move back to the code. So I was able to access uh, a given object in the hash map in constant time. How would I go about seeing if a particular key exists in the map? Maybe I don't want to call something on the object that I get from the map because the object may not be there. There may not be a key with a certain name. How do I check that out using map? So on this section of code, I have uh, see if a content see if a contact exists. So I'm going to say if not contacts has ting, then I'm going to write adding contact ting, and I'm going to set a ting object in the map, and that ting is actually my wife ting Wei. So I'm going to add her to the contacts the family contacts map. She doesn't exist, and of course she doesn't because we didn't put her there yet. I'm gonna add her to the map. So we should see it adding her to the map. Adding contact Ting, there we go. So this line of code was called because Ting did not exist. Uh, the contacts map did not have Ting inside of it. Let's double check that. Let's make sure that it is in there. So if contacts has Ting, then go ahead and write out her age. Now I'm printing out her age here. Don't tell my wife that I did that. Don't let her know that I put her age on YouTube. So I'm gonna run it. There we go, found Ting, her age. Uh, that's quite disturbing. She is not that age because I am not a dirty old man. Let me change that number. There we go, let's change it to there. That's about right. Okay, with a map you have the has, it'll let you know whether the, a particular key exists in the map. You can also remove items from the map. So let's try that out. I'm going to delete Shane and loop through it again and you will not see Shane in the map. Deleting Shane from the map, there's Nick, Gabrielle, and Ting, and I'm no longer in the map. Pretty simple, just delete it from the map. I also can remove all items from the map. So I'm going to call maps or contacts.clear. Loop through it again, print out what is in there. And there's nothing in the map, didn't print out anything. Again, very simple. You have delete, delete one of them. You have clear to clear all of them. Now with a map, unlike an object, you can easily tell um, how many uh, objects are in that map and here's a different way of creating the map. So here I'm actually going new map and I'm passing in an array and that array has name value pairs. In this case the key or the name is key value pairs. In this case the key is one and this is the value. Key is two and this is the value. Key is three and this is the value. So I'm creating a map with an array. That array has key value pairs and you just pass it into the maps constructor and let's print that out to so make sure that works correctly. Click refresh. So here we go. You can easily loop through just the keys. So here's key one, key two, key three, and you can easily loop through the values, JavaScript, Java, Python, and you can easily see that there are three values in the map. One, two, three. Now, how did I do that? So let's go back to here. So in this code here, I am using the keys to loop through it. So I'm basically saying 
um, map dot the name of my map dot keys, putting it as a constant, and then I'm doing a for and looping through that constant, which is actually an array, and I'm printing out those keys. Now, same thing for the values. I am using map the, the map's name uh, and dot values, and I'm looping through the array that comes from that method and writing out the values. Now, another way to do this also is to use dot entries. So I have dot entries. Here I'm getting the entries array. The entries array ha is an array of arrays. So I'm going to loop through each entry in the array. I'm going to get the zero index of the first one and the one index of the first one and print it out. Then I'm going to loop and do the same for the next. So what I should see is key, the key value, the value, and the values value. Now that's a tongue twister. So there we go. Key, value, key, value. So I went through these bottom two quickly. Let me iterate. So I'll start at the beginning here. First, you can access the size, dot size on the map. Next, you can access the entries uh, by doing the name of the map, dot entries. And you can loop through those, of course, and their array of arrays. The first index of the array entry is zero. Uh, has the key, the, the second one, one, has the value. You can get the keys that are in the map, and you can get the values that are in the map using the keys function or the values function on the map. One thing to note is when you get the entries, the keys that are values, when you iterate through these things, it will iterate in the order that you added the object to the map. So it keeps the order so if you wanted to process the items in a map in the order that you got them, no problem. It takes care of that for you. That's very cool with the map data structure. So very neat, very easy to use, very clean. I like it. I like it. It's very much like the other languages like C Sharp or Java. It's a great interface. I like it much better than using dynamic properties on an object. That's it for today. Pretty simple. I hope you like the new ES6 map. If you have any questions, leave me a message below. If you have not subscribed and you'd like to see more of our videos, we have several different programming languages we're going to go over. Uh, feel free to click the like button on this video if you like it and click the subscribe button below to see our upcoming videos. Be sure to do that and we appreciate having you and I hope to see you again in the future. Bye.